So now we're going to model a system and linearize it so that we can find the transfer function of a nonlinear system. So here is our system. We have uh, Valerie. She volunteered for this, really. And she's attached on a spring, rubber band that's acting as a string, spring to our unmovable box of Hyunmi Nokja, our delicious brown rice green tea. Don't ask me how it got up here. It, it moves on its own, but once it's there, it is unmovable. So, not moving. These are our, our system components. Now let's model it. So, Valerie has a mass. We'll call it M. And we have this spring. The spring has a constant, a spring constant of K. And what we care about, our output of the system, will be the position of Valerie. So, we'll say that We'll define x of t here, and we're going to define it in this direction as positive. So if she moves downward, it's in the positive direction. If she goes upward, it's in the negative direction. And this x is 0 when the spring is not exerting any force, when it's in a neutral position. And we have some other forces as well. One of them is gravity, right? So gravity is pushing downward on Valerie. Oh, I can't spell gravity. Gravity, pushing down. And we also need an input. So I'm going to be the input, or someone would be the input, and we'll push Valerie in the downward direction for a positive input. So here is our basic system model, and now we're going to bring it back to the rest of the board and model this system and then linearize it. So we've defined all the variables that we need to on our system model, and now we need to look at the dynamics. So for a mass system like this, we go to the basic equation of F equals MA. So this is our equation that A it determines the dynamics of the system. So let's look at the forces that are on Valerie. One, we have input, u of t, that's one. And then we have gravity. With that, we just use the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which we'll just call g, so mg. But then we also have the force of the spring pulling back up in the negative direction. So that'll be negative kx. So those are our forces, not too bad. And now the other side, we have m, the mass of Valerie, and the acceleration, which again is just the double derivative of the position. So here's our very basic equation. And we'll see that this is nonlinear. And we can tell because if we have a linear system and its inputs, so x of t, is equal to 0, and x dot of t is equal to 0, x double dot of t is equal to 0, everything's at rest, and our input is equal to 0, then our system should be 0. But if we plug these values in here, we would get 0 plus mg minus 0 equals 0. No, this is not true. So this is not a linear system, this is a nonlinear system. So nonlinear, which means that we have to linearize it in order to work with it in terms of transfer functions. And in order to linearize it, first we need to figure out where the equilibrium point is. So we want to find the equilibrium point. Find the So find the equilibrium point. What this means is when our system is at rest. So our system is at rest when nothing is moving. So the dynamics x dot and x double dot are equal to 0. Once again. And we want to find the position. We're going to call it equilibrium value of x. And we have an equilibrium value of the input. We're assuming that that's going to be 0. So no input 
we want to find the equilibrium value of x. So we can we'll plug these with these assumptions, plug it back into this equation. So here our input's going to be 0 plus mg minus k, and we want to find x e. I'm going to drop the t's for a little bit and equals m times 0, right? So now we can solve for x e, and that will be our equilibrium position. So if we move this around, kx e, mg, we see that x e is equal to mg over k. So this is our equilibrium position. And if we think back to our original system, this makes sense because gravity is always pushing down on Valerie, and so the spring has to pull back up with an equal force. And that position will not be where x is 0, that's where the spring is exerting no, no force. It will be a little bit positive, a little bit positive based on these values where everything will be in equilibrium. Okay, so this is the equilibrium value, and next we're going to linearize the system around this value. I've rewritten the equilibrium states up here, and now we're going to linearize our system around that point. So remember when we linearize that we change some variables. So now x is equal to this equilibrium point plus delta x. This is our small perturbation signal, remember. And we'll do the same for u. In this case, it won't be u, e u here is 0. So delta u will actually be the same thing. Uh, but we'll just write this for completeness. So these are our two new variables, our input and then our output. And so we need to linearize these two systems. We're actually going to work on two sides of the equation. So first we're going to do just the right hand here. So if we think about what this is, and we have our x, so this is m times d double derivative, right, dt squared, of x, which is now xe, the equilibrium point, plus delta x. Well, we know that our equilibrium point, that's actually a constant, because that's our one equilibrium point. So the derivative of that is actually 0. And so we get m times d squared, dt squared, the double derivative of our delta x term. So that's actually relatively easy. So it just, you're just switching from x to delta x here. Now let's look at the other side and linearize this side. Okay, well, we can think about this as f if we want to. We'll call this f. And it's technically of x and u. So here's our function. And first to linearize it, I guess we'll skip a line here, we'll go here. Um, we would take f of x and u at their equilibrium points. Okay, and if we, we could plug this all back in here, but we just solved for these points such that this expression is 0. So this will be equal to 0. And then we have to take the derivatives of this, this expression, and we actually have to take the partial derivative in terms of x and then in terms of u, which we didn't do in the basic linearization, but if you go back to how you linearize multivariable, you would take the partial derivative. So we'll do that. So we'll take the partial derivative of f with x, and we'll evaluate it, of course, at x e, and multiply it by delta x. We'll do the same thing for u. We can fit it here. Delta f, delta u, evaluated at, actually it's at both points, x e, u, delta u. So it's a little bit squished in there, but let's look at each component and write them all out. So here we had 0 already, great, so that makes sense. And now we need to take the partial derivative of this thing in terms of x, which we look at this, these don't have any x's, this does, so it would be negative k. And then we multiply it by the delta x. Okay? 
And then we do the same thing, but this time with u. So these don't have any u's in it, so it's just this u. Its coefficient will be 1, so it'll just be delta u. And then that equals to m. Ah, we'll just rewrite it with the dot notation now. Oops. I dropped a squared there. This is correct. So we're going to do delta x double dot above the whole thing. So this would be our new expression. And now you can see that, let's get rid of this here, that this is all the terms are in terms of delta x or delta u, which is now become our input and our output. So now delta x is our output and delta u is our input. So now we can take the Laplace transform of this linearized expression. Well, let's do that. So Laplace, I'll okay, get a negative k, and this we'll have to call it delta x of s here. We'll bring these s's back in. And then this would be delta u of s. And then m s squared, because the double derivative, and delta x of s. Okay, so let's move everything around. We want the move that to that side so we get everything together. So we get delta u s equals delta x over s times now we have m s squared plus k. And now if we move these back around. So now this is our GP, our plant transfer function, and it's x, delta x of s, delta u of s equals 1 over this expression, m s squared plus k. So there we have it. We have linearized this system around its equilibrium point and found its transfer function. And I'll just, this was our linearized expression. And this one was a relatively easy one. Because if you compare this back to its original one, it's really the same signals turn into small signals, so the delta x or delta u, and we just get rid of the mt. So this was a relatively straightforward one, but you would use the same process for more complicated systems. So this is how you linearize a nonlinear system and find its transfer function.